Hello. Welcome to Ignani.com. Microsoft Excel 2010. Chapter 1. Getting started with Excel 2010. Part B. Introducing Excel 2010, User Interface. Before you can start using Excel, you must first start Excel. This brings the Excel window onto the Windows desktop, and you can then begin using the program. For all the tasks in this series, we assume that you have already installed Excel 2010 on your computer. We have used Windows 7 as the operating system for this tutorial. However, except for few Windows 7 specific tasks, Excel features remain the same on any other version of Windows. Let us see how to start Excel. Excel can be started in the same way as you would do any application. Click Start. In the Start menu that appears, click All Programs. This will open up Application Programs menu. Click Microsoft Office from the list of programs. And then click Microsoft Excel 2010 from the Microsoft Office menu. The Microsoft Excel window appears on the desktop. While this is not the only way, but if it's the first time and you don't have any shortcuts created, then this would be the easiest approach. If you find it taking too many steps, or for some reason, unable to find the Excel icon with the steps mentioned above, then you can try another approach. Click Start. At the bottom of the Start menu that appears, you will find the search box. Just type in the word Excel, which will display all the programs that are available with the name containing Excel. From the list of items that shows up, click Microsoft Excel 2010. The Microsoft Excel window appears on the desktop. After you have used Excel a few times, it will automatically appear on the main start menu under the most used programs list. In such a case, you can click that icon to start the program without going through all the steps mentioned above. However, if you don't use Excel for long and if you are using other applications, there are chances that it may disappear from the most used programs list. To avoid the Excel icon disappearing from the list, you can pin it. You can either pin the Excel icon onto the Start menu, or onto the taskbar. The list of items that you see within the box on the screen, are all pinned items. While everything below it are most used programs. A line is used to separate the pinned, and most used program shortcuts. To force the Excel icon onto the Start menu, follow these steps. Select the Microsoft Excel 2010 either from the Programs menu or from the Most Used Programs list as you did earlier. Right-click the Microsoft Excel 2010 icon, which will display the shortcut menu. Here you can see two options, Pin to Taskbar, and Pin to Start menu. Click Pin to Start menu to pin it to the Start menu. You can see the Microsoft Excel 2010 icon now pinned to the Start menu. It just moved above the separator line. Let's see pinning it to the taskbar. This time we shall pin the icon from the Microsoft Office menu. Follow the steps as we did in our first demo. In the last step, instead of clicking on the Microsoft Excel 2010 icon, right click and select Pin to Taskbar. Notice that the icon now appears on the taskbar. Now that we have pinned it on both the start menu and on the taskbar, we can open the Excel directly from many of these two places. Let me start it by clicking on the Microsoft Excel icon pinned on the taskbar. Just click on it and open the Excel. Here you go, this is Excel 2010 user interface in which you will be spending most part of your time in this tutorial, and also in your daily life while using Excel. This is what you see, once you start Excel 2010.
Microsoft Excel program begins, with a blank new workbook displayed, ready for you to do what you set out to achieve. Except for some set of tabs with a wide range of icons and buttons, the large portion of the window is covered with square boxes with white background. Let us start our exploration of Microsoft Excel 2010 user interface. For those users who have worked with Excel 2003 and earlier, you may find this interface a bit different with all those tabs at the top, and missing menus that you might have got accustomed. This is because, starting with Excel 2007, the program's user interface somewhat underwent a dramatic overhaul, which for veteran users might require some getting used to, while the beginners might be at ease since they are fresh, and not in confused state as the veterans. Before I start to take you a tour of Excel 2010 user interface, let me give you a brief introduction about some of the common terms involved with Excel. Excel documents are known as workbooks. A single workbook can store as many sheets as will fit into memory, and these sheets are stacked like the pages in a notebook. Sheets can either be a worksheet, which is a normal spreadsheet with rows and columns in a grid format, or chart sheet, which is a special sheet that holds a single chart. Worksheets are where you will spend most of your time on Excel. Each worksheet is made up of a grid of cells with 1,048,576 rows and 16,384 columns. While Excel numbers, rows starting with 1, it uses letters to columns which start with A. When Excel uses all the letters of the alphabet, it continues with A, 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 B, and so on ending with X, F, D. So column 1 is A, column 26 is Z, column 27 is AA, column 52 is AZ, column 53 is BA, and so on. It ends with column 16384 which is XFD. Rows are numbered from 1 to 1,048,576. And columns are labeled from A to XFD. The intersection of a row and a column is called a cell. In total, there are 17,179,869,184 cells, more than enough for just about any use. Cells have addresses, which are based on their row and column. The upper left cell in a worksheet is called A1. And the cell down at the bottom right is called X. XFD1048576 In the next chapter, I will continue with the introduction of Microsoft Excel 2010 user interface. If you have any questions or need more information on any part of this video, please use the forum at ignani.com, we will be happy to help you. You can find a lot of free video tutorials, training materials, how to videos, and much much more at our site www.ignani.com. Use our forum topic related to this tutorial to get answers to all your questions. We would want your learning process as interactive as possible. Feel free to contact us.